This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for March 31, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, some teachers reporting that March salaries were incorrectly calculated. Amid the delays in payment of March salaries to teachers, those who have been paid are reporting that the figures are incorrect. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Lassandra Harrison, says some teachers have not seen benefits and allowances owed to them. She says in light of these payments anomalies, she is calling on the Ministry of Finance to explain to the teachers the inconsistencies between what was expected and what was paid. The JTA president says the finance minister should provide clarity on how certain calculations were done to determine the salaries of teachers. The JTA president also stated that there should have been more preparation for challenges now being experienced given the government's push to have teachers and other public sector workers sign off on the compensation review. She maintains that the government should have paid the teachers their usual March salary and to make the other payments at a later date. UC Rosal given two weeks to improve treatment of Windalco waste. Bauxite Alumina Company UC Rosal has two weeks to implement measures to improve the treatment of waste from its Windalco operations. This follows on from last year's release of effluent into the Rio Cobre and the ensuing fish kill. Chief Executive Officer of the National Environment and the Planning Agency, Peter Knight, says the company must adhere to the established requirements for the treatment of effluent. The company is to begin restocking of the Rio Cobra in May. Court of Appeal overturns a demolition order for $100 million apartment. The Court of Appeal has overturned a Supreme Court order for the demolition of a $100 million apartment complex at 18 Upper Montrose Road in St. Andrew. The decision is a win for the developer Martin Lynn and his two children, Melissa and Maxwell, who appealed Justice Judith Pusey's order that was granted in January 2020. Justice Marva MacDonald Bishop, who was on the panel that heard the appeal case in March 2022, gave the oral judgment this morning. The written reasons are to be shared later. The developers were represented by King's Counsel Michael Hilton of the law firm Hilton Powell. Six residents brought the case against them. They are Sarah Chin Jensma, Marvin Gordon Hall, Marcus Handel, Una Pearl Witter, and Brenda Rosa Francis. Retired Justice Henderson, Emmanuel Donor, who was the sixth person, died in January. Their lead attorney is Emil Lieber from the law firm Don Cox. The Supreme Court had ruled that the Upper Mount Rose Road neighborhood was a single-family residential area and that the Linz failed to convince the court that the character of the area had changed to facilitate the multifamily development. On March 11, 2020, the Court of Appeal granted an order for the demolition action to be paused until the case was determined. Magati High elated by Adriana's return, fire victim to be fettered by school. School friends and the teachers of Adriana Leng at Magati High School wore smiles and happy faces on Thursday after the 13-year-old burned victim finally returned to Jamaica following a series of life-saving surgeries in the United States. Adriana and her three brothers, seven-year-old twins Jaden and Jordan, and eight-year-old Adriano were trapped inside their Westmoreland home by a massive fire on September 4 last year. Adriano was the lone survivor, but needed urgent care to stay alive, having received burns to more than 90% of her body. Her schoolmates at Magoti thought they would never see her alive again. To witness her miraculous return to Jamaica on Thursday brought elation to them and the teachers as well. They brought her flowers and showered her with love and hugs at the Norman Manley International Airport, which appeared to bring joy to Adriana. Tasha Gay Swaby Allen, one of Adriana's teachers, described the teen's return as a miracle and said she was excited and overwhelmed to be in the girls' presence on Thursday. According to Swaby Allen, a team has been created at Magoti High to welcome Adriana back to the institution in a comfortable and a safe way. The feeling is beyond expressing in any form. Having your student return to you is more than a miracle. I taught Adriana English language and literature 
five days per week in grade 7. She was also an athlete for my house, Arcade House. We have a team in place and we call it the Welcome Committee and we are putting things in place to finalize the exact date for her return to school. There is a planned function for that day and the school is looking forward to this special moment, she said. Alleged the car thieves granted $500,000 bail. Four men who are charged in connection with the theft of a woman's motor car were each granted bail in the sum of $500,000 when they appeared in the St. James Parish Court on Thursday. Cheyenne Harrison, Odave Wright, and Cheyenne Anderson, all 29 years old of St. Catherine Addresses, and the 19-year-old Tatiana Champagny from St. Elizabeth, are charged with motor vehicle larceny and receiving stolen property. They are represented by attorneys at law Albert Morgan and Henry McCurdy. When the case was called up before parish judge Sasha Marie Smith Ashley, the prosecution objected to bail on the grounds that the defendants reside outside of the parish. In response, Justice Smith Ashley questioned why the men were in Montego Bay at the time of the theft. It was a pre-Valentine's Day, attorney Morgan explained, as he responded to why his clients Harrison and Wright were in the city. In the meantime, McCurdy, who represents Anderson and the Champagny, stated that they were willing to pay $800,000 in restitution, which is the estimated cost of the damage done to the complainant's recovered vehicle. The case was temporarily postponed so that the defendants could participate in a mediation session with a probation officer present in court and they agreed to make restitution. The judge subsequently granted bail to each defendant in the amount of $500,000 with up to two shorties and reporting conditions. The matter was set for mention on April 14, and the defendants were told to have the $800,000 available on that day. According to the information before the court, the complainant parked her Toyota Axio in a parking lot along Howard Cook Boulevard at approximately 7.10 p.m. on February 13. When she returned, the vehicle was gone. She reportedly called the police, and the tracker on the car led them to a section of Coral Gardens, where they found the car partially scrapped and hidden in bushes. The four men were later held in a Toyota Belta motor car, which the police intercepted near the Ibero Star Hotel. A bag with the complainant's personal effects were found in the car the men were traveling in. They were then arrested and charged. U.S. student in torture case remanded until April 14. Matthew Hyde, the university student accused of the abduction and the torture of a female student, has been further remanded until April 14. A parent heard a bail application was scheduled for today, but the matter was adjourned for the file to be completed. His attorney, Peter Champagny Casey, says that the court is awaiting the medical certificate of the complainant. Mr. Hyde is charged with assault occasioning grievous bodily harm, use of malicious communication, assault occasioning actual bodily harm, and a false imprisonment. He is alleged to have held his ex-girlfriend captive for three days in his room. The complainant was reportedly discovered sometime after 10 p.m. on February 9. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.